Hi guys, back again. Right, this time we've taken a bit of a backward step. Um, and by, what, by that what I mean is, um, instead of having an external voltage source to power the controller, I'm just going to control the controller from a pot. This is a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer. It's just some cheap pot that I happen to have lying around. So what I'm going to do is get this connected up again, get the power connected on, and then see what happens when I try using this pot. Uh, this is just the voltage for the coils as I mentioned before because this is an alternator, it's not a motor, it doesn't have magnets in it so it needs to be needs to get the magnetism from somewhere. So it gets it from 10 volt or 12 volt uh, battery. I'll just turn this on so you can see what the actual Voltage is that the that is going to the controller, and at the minute the controller is getting zero volts. So let's turn it on. Controller is still getting zero volts. So what should happen when I start to turn this knob is that that voltage should start to climb up. And see, it's 250 milliohms, millivolts, sorry, half a volt almost. And at around about one volt, the motor should start to turn. So I'll try and climb up slowly. Not there yet, there's one volt. And there's the motor's just started. 1.2 volts, the motor kicks in and starts to turn and as you can see it's turning very slowly at the minute so if I continue to turn that around to increase the voltage as you can see it increases the voltage quite a lot now, what I've done here is, this is all really, really simple. It's a bog standard e-bike controller connected to a motor. Forget the fact that that's an alternator, it's just ignore that completely. You just consider it as a motor and this is just extra wiring, but forget that. Um, the only thing I've done is, instead of having the throttle, which is here, instead of having the throttle uh, controlling the, volt, the, the speed, I have this um, potentiometer controlling the speed and the way that that's wired just hopefully you'll be able to see this let's see if we can get this to focus controller throttle cable coming out of the controller pause wire, negative wire, sense wire going on to the three connections of the potentiometer. So it's really, really simple. So the sensor wire is going to the, the, the swipe on the pot. So the sensor wire initially is on the pointing to the negative uh, side of the controller. And as I turn that pot around, it then goes up to the more towards the positive, the 5 volts on the controller and it will come up that's about 3 quarters of the way it's because there's a resistance on the actual controller itself you've got two resistors in parallel so it's it's quite uh, sensitive there we go but it's surprising how slowly you can have the, the motor turning when you're using just a potentiometer And like I said, this is a 100k pot. Haven't tried it with a 10k pot, not sure what would happen with that. But um, that seems to be working quite nicely. So there you go, that's how you can control your e-bike just from a simple potentiometer. So next step then is to try and get uh, the Arduino configured. Uh, I think it's going to be easier to do that rather than um, 
try and mess about with 5 volts coming from another source. Or maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a go with try and get 5 volts from a battery and put it onto there and connect the pot the same way. I might just do that now. In fact, I just will. Back in a second. Right, so back again. This time we have the pause connection coming from the controller which uh, goes through this cable and comes out on the brown wire. It is, as you can see, it's been disconnected and a bit of tape put onto it. And instead of that we have the pause coming from this 4 volt battery going straight to one side of the potentiometer. The negative coming from the battery is joining up with the negative from the controller. So the negative of the battery and the negative of the controller are joined. And the sensor connection from the, um, from the controller goes straight to the, uh, the swipe of the potentiometer. So what will happen is at the moment the potentiometer is turned so that it's pointing all the way towards the negative. So we have zero volts. And let's just make sure we're turned on. Okay, we're turned on. So if I start to turn this, we're going back up the same way we did before. Go up to about 1.2 volts. There we go. And the motor starts to turn. Yeah. And the higher voltage makes it turn all the faster. So, um, just to recap on what it is I've done there. You can see there's the negative from the battery is joining in to the negative from the controller. So the two negatives are, are tied together. The positive from the battery goes into this side of the potentiometer and the positive from the controller has been disconnected. And the sensor from the controller is going straight to the wiper on the potentiometer. So. That's how it's working. It seems to be working very well. So it's basically the same as the way I had it connected before, only it was using a, a Hall effect sensor the last time, but this time I'm just using a potentiometer instead to increase the voltage. <clears throat> but from this I can see quite easily that we need 1.2 volts to start turning this motor. And once we get above 1.2 volts, between 1.2 and 4 volts, is uh, going to be full speed. Three and a half to four volts is full speed. Um, so that's it. Now to get the Arduino program so that we can get it to um, deliver voltage and then see if we can control it from buttons on the handlebars and or even from the, um, the cadence sensor. We could use this to make a, um, a cruise control Cruise control will be very simple actually. All we need to do is uh, set up this potentiometer with a switch, flick a switch and you're on cruise control. Um, might cause problems if, uh, if you don't switch the thing off again, you need some, some way of turning it off uh, automatically so when you hit the brakes it turns it off but um, the brake switches turn off the controller anyway so um, it shouldn't be too bad. But that's where we're at at the moment. Um, yeah, we could always have a make the break. Uh, we could always set, set it up in such a way that when, when you hit the, the switch, it, it wasn't a latching switch, but it latched a relay or something so that it held the, um, the cruise control. And as soon as you pull the, the brakes, kills the power, kills the, the part of the relay and uh, knocks off the cru cruise control. So that should be fairly simple to do. But uh, the more complex thing now is the Arduino side of things. So that's, I think that's where we'll go to next. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.